Accessing a night vision camera output over Wi-Fi opens the door to many cool applications and today we are going to put the basis for that by running RTSP server on a Raspberry Pi 4 to enable online video streaming. All the steps related to camera testing and RTSP server integration will be explained in details. We are going to use the command line interface like pros today, so without any further ado, let's put the show on the road. Alright, so here's the setup that we are going to use along this tutorial. So here I have Raspberry Pi 4, it's connected over a camera server interface, over this uh, flat connector uh, to this camera. So the camera has OV. A 5647 uh, driver uh, and here it has two infrared lights power LEDs on the left and right and it has uh, several LDR sensors for detecting uh, light intensity so first let me open one of these LEDs to show you the infrared LEDs so here's how the LED look like it's actually nothing but uh, a power infrared LED and this is how it looks on the back this thing actually uh, gets uh, quite uh, hot when it's running so it will be a good idea to place some heat sinks uh, on these uh, pads so let me put this back and power on uh, my raspberry pi so now my setup is powered on and since there is a lot of light over here i need to uh, turn off the light so the infrared leds start working because they are supposed to work only in the dark so let me turn them off Yes, so now you can see that this LED is on right now. During this tutorial, I'll put this uh, in a dark room. So we're going to program the Raspberry Pi to stream the camera output over RTSP server. So we can access it uh, from anywhere uh, connected to my local network. All right, so this is the first time I'm showing myself in uh, my tutorials. And since the topic is about cameras, so I thought that uh, it might be a good idea to do a face reveal. Uh, okay, so enough talking and let's get back to our topic. Okay, so the ultimate goal of this tutorial is to uh, set up a real-time streaming protocol server on our Raspberry Pi uh, and set up our camera to start streaming over uh, that server so we can access it uh, on our local network. So to start with, I'm going to access my Raspberry Pi. So here's the command prompt on Windows and I'm going to access my Raspberry Pi using SSH command. Okay, uh, actually I've already set a static IP for my Raspberry Pi, so the IP uh, of it does not change when I reset my uh, router or I turn off the Raspberry Pi. So this is actually a good practice to do. And now we need to enable the camera on our hardware. So we need to enable it on the Raspberry Pi. And we can do that in the interface options and we need to have this option, the camera enable option, uh, activated. Of course, on your side, don't forget to do the uh, sudo opt uh, update and upgrade because this is necessary to keep your uh, operation system uh, up to date. Also, the camera enable option may not be available in the Raspberry Pi config uh, menu because you may be uh, running some different image on your Raspberry Pi. And to make sure that our Raspberry Pi is detecting the connected camera, we are going to run the following command. Uh, and you see that on my side I have my camera supported and it's detected and now we are going to execute a take photo command so we can verify that uh, our camera is operational so let's do that so currently my camera is streaming right now so I suppose that it can't take photos so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disable the streaming functionality uh, and repeat this process Yes, so uh, right now I suppose that the camera uh, has taken a picture and you can see here test JPEG uh, picture has been taken. So uh, since I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH, I can't view this uh, picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer it to my host machine and view it from here. So now I'm going to open PowerShell and I'm going to run a secure copy command. I have already run this command on PowerShell, so I have it on my history. And here it is. Of course, I will be sharing all the commands that I'm using today uh, on GitHub repository. So we'll be able to copy 
uh, whatever I'm doing right now. Uh, so this is due to the coloring uh, it does not appear uh, properly okay so here in the secure copy command we have the source machine which is the Raspberry Pi in our case and here we have the uh, host machine which is uh, Windows that I'm running right now so we need to modify uh, this source in order to point uh, to this directory okay so the directory that we are aiming at is uh, the home directory so we need to copy that uh, to the source directory over here okay and the destination is going to be this directory over here and when I press enter yeah so we see here the uh, image has been received and if I open it so it's the image that's taken by my camera and this picture was taken in the dark uh, that's why you can see this uh, pinky color which is the infrared uh, light color as we have seen the camera i have has to power infrared leds we are going to start streaming uh, in a bit so we are going to have things more clear uh, anyway so now to this point we know that and we are sure that uh, our camera is operational and now we can set up our rtsp uh, server and start video streaming and for that I'm going to use uh, video for Linux uh, to RTSP server so we are going to import this project to our uh, Raspberry Pi and compile it there and start running it this video is sponsored by GLC PCB if you are looking for producing or having your own engineering prototype then GLC PCB is your correct destination for low price and high quality you can get your PCB manufactured and assembled all you need to do is to upload your design on their website to make your order and they will make it real for you within days. Easy to use, affordable to make and reliable to trust. You can always count on GLC PCB. Don't miss out GLC PCB 6 layer PCB special where you can not only get high quality 6 layer PCB for just $5, you can also have many coupons for your PCB ordering. Check the link in the description. Okay, so let's get back to our command prompt. Uh, actually I've imported that using uh, git clone uh, command so if I go to the workspace you can see that I've imported uh, this project to my uh, Raspberry Pi so I'm going to access that and here you can see all the necessary project files now we need to build this project uh, and for that we are going to run several commands so I've already prepared that Actually, this is the uh, command list or the uh, file that I'm going to share on my GitHub repository so you can repeat my work. So first here you can see that I've cloned the uh, project from GitHub and then uh, I've accessed that uh, directory. And inside the build folder, we are going to execute a CMake, which is going to look at the CMake list. Uh, and depending on that, it's going to generate the necessary files for building that project. And then we are going to execute make command with every uh, resources we have so this is going to use all the cores that we have on the Raspberry Pi for the compilation process of course there are two ways of doing that we can either compile this project on the machine that we are going to use which is the Raspberry Pi or say that I'm running Linux I could uh, compile that on my own machine and then and then transfer the executable files to the Raspberry Pi and that's called uh, cross compilation so now we are doing the easy way of course we are able to do that because our raspberry pi is quite powerful so after completing the uh, compilation process we need to uh, execute make install command and after that we will be able to run our uh, rtsp server okay so next step we are going to add the camera driver to the modules so this will let the rtsp server use our camera and this can be done using uh, modprobe command uh, and in order to make our modification permanent we are going to execute this command so this command is going to append the camera driver to the uh, modules file I have done that so now let's see how the modules file uh, got updated so in order to access that file we can uh, either run cat or nano editor yes so here you can see that there are two drivers the i2c device and the camera uh, and video for uh, Linux RTSP server okay so having set up the RTSP uh, server now we are able to start video streaming uh, and we are going to do that using this command so we are going to use video for Linux 
and then we are going to select the port where we are going to uh, do the streaming so I'm going to select 8554 port you can select any port you want but of course you want to make sure that that port is available and then I'm going to uh, make my video streaming uh, as multicast so every device uh, connected to my local network can access that as uh, video streaming uh, after that I'm going to select the width uh, of the video so this has to be in capital and then I'm going to set the height and then we are going to set the frame per second which is 30 and then we are going to select the camera we are using for uh, streaming which can be accessed using the dev okay so now it is telling us that the video streaming has started and it can be accessed using this uh, URL so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to use a VLC so this is VLC and in the uh, network stream I'm going to copy my URL and then I'm hitting play and here I have my uh, lamp so I'm going to turn it on to show you so I have it connected to my uh, home bridge to my uh, Apple home app so I'm going to turn it on as red color so you can see how fast the uh, reaction is so I'm changing the color right now uh, I'm changing the brightness turning it off yeah okay so now there's one last step we need to do before finalizing this project that is creating a service that will start the video streaming every time we uh, start up the Raspberry Pi so you don't need to start the uh, streaming manually uh, every time your Raspberry Pi uh, gets restarted so for that I've actually prepared this service let me open it so inside this service you can see that I'm just uh, starting the uh, video streaming whenever uh, the Raspberry Pi gets restarted and of course all the services are located in this file so we can access that so if I put list so here are all my services and you can see here my service uh, where it's located or you can create the service on your own right away by uh, using the nano command so I can go sudo nano use the service name that you want and then you can start editing or creating it uh, from uh, scratch and when having your service created we need to start the service so here I've checked my service it's already running so I'm hitting control C to exit this and of course in order to start your service if it's not started first you should hit enable and then start and then uh, your service will start running okay so this brings me to the end of this tutorial of course everything that you have seen right now uh, is on my github repository so here i've shared all the necessary commands on the uh, readme uh, of course i'm going to make this more readable so in the upcoming tutorial i'm going to work over integrating uh, this video streaming on uh, homebridge so we can view the camera streaming on the apple home app just like what i'm doing so let me show you what i've done this is the topic of the upcoming tutorial okay so here i have uh, two cameras one is from sunoff and the other one is the raspberry pi camera and i'm going to integrate another camera using sp32 s3 stay tuned for that tutorial so we are going to do this in the upcoming tutorial so you won't need any third party application to view your uh, camera streaming so that's all for today i hope that you have learned something new so if you liked it uh, share this video among your friends and tell them about your solar connects see you in the upcoming tutorials and bye bye